What's up, Rage and Nation? How's it going? This is Alex. You watching a Rage and Ronin review? In this video, you're gonna be watching my spoiler chat review for Godzilla. If you haven't seen the movie, stop watching this video right now because I get into very specific details. Now, if you want to know how I felt the movie and you haven't seen the movie, I have a spoiler-free review where I don't get into any specific details and telling you about my thoughts about the film. So you can check that out. I'm gonna leave you the link at the end of this video. But for right now. We're going to start talking about spoilers. I'm going to tell you what I didn't like about the film and what I did like about the film. Keep in mind, I really enjoyed this film. I'm giving it a 8 out of 10. But there's some very specific things that I thought could have been better. For example, let's start off with the human element. I thought Brian Cranston and Ken Watanabe were great in this film. But Elizabeth Olsen and Aaron Taylor Johnson, I'll be completely honest. While Aaron Taylor Johnson is the main lead in the role... His character, along with Elizabeth Olsen's character, are very poorly written. They're, they're, they're weak characters. Elizabeth Olsen's character is very cliche as a nurse, just waiting there in the hospital for her husband to come home and just running away from disaster. That's a very cliche thing. We've seen it in a lot of disaster movies. Aaron Taylor Johnson's character, like, I get, like, his motive in the movie. Like, he's, he's... He really wants to, to um, like he has a very specific cause in this film. It's because um, he wants to um, uh, really, really understand the truth about the, the death of his father, right? And uh, he doesn't want the same thing to happen to his family. He has a son. He wants to get home to his wife, all right? Uh, he doesn't want to lose his mother, all right? Just like how he doesn't want his son to lose his father, all right? So I get that about the movie. That's like, the, that's the human connection in this movie. They have to write a story like that in. But what I thought was totally weak is that his skill set is completely useless. He's an explosive ordinance disposal um, uh, um, unit, okay? That, that's, that's what his skill set is. If you don't know what uh, explosive ordnance disposal is, that's EOD, that's um, these guys who know how to disarm bombs, okay? That's, just, that's a specialty, okay? It's, it's a very uh, a special unit in the, in the military. And um, they, the, the military includes them on the ride to, to, uh, to, to fight Godzilla, but since when in the entire movie do you ever see him use his actual skill? <laughs> They bring him along for the ride, but do you ever see him disarm bombs? Uh, do you see him ever put together bombs? I mean, he helps a guy carry one. He knows he 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 tells a guy about some knowledge he knows about bombs. But when is his skill set ever used? Never in the film at all. <laughs> so, like I said, um, they they didn't put a whole lot of thought into writing his character. All right. Uh, but they did put a lot of thought into how they could make this film a lot better in terms of the whole kaiju aspect of the film. Okay, now I have a question for you guys that maybe I missed in the movie. Maybe you guys picked it up, but I totally missed it. What exactly does Godzilla eat in this film? Like, what is this form of sustenance? How does he survive? Because when he was fighting with the, the Mutos, he didn't, like, he didn't exactly, like, chomp on them. He didn't consume them. Uh, he just bites them as, an, as a form of attack. But what does he eat? All right, I know the Mutos feed on radiation, so does Godzilla also feed on radiation as well? Anyways, maybe I missed that, but um, like I thought that they would get into more specific details other than just the fact that Godzilla likes to fight. <laughs> now, like a huge thing that a lot of people or fans might have a tiny complaint about or a huge complaint about is that there seems like there's a bigger emphasis on the Mutos than there is Godzilla. In fact, it looked like the Mutos actually had more screen time and full battle sequences than Godzilla. Godzilla was presented in the form of teasers. They didn't want to show a lot of him right away in, in the first and second act of the film, but it was finally till we got to the third act of, fil of the film then we finally got to see him in his full glory. And when they were introducing what we thought was Godzilla, it didn't end up being Godzilla. It ended up being the Mutos, and they were the primary threat. All right? So Godzilla was presented in the form of uh, seismic events, like earthquakes and tremors and all that stuff. So there was essentially, a, or rather ultimately, a bigger emphasis on the Mutos. And the Mutos needed to be there. I get why the Mutos need to be there, because... They, they didn't want, the studios and the, the, the filmmakers didn't want this movie to be just about U.S. military versus 
Godzilla. We've seen that type of thing before in a 1998 film. So I understand why they wanted to go with a monster versus monster movie. Hell, the fans would have, uh, you know, would have liked that too. And we did enjoy that. But Godzilla, the title character of the movie, isn't in the movie a lot. All right. He, when he's in it, it's freaking awesome. And I like the story leading up to him, but there isn't full sequences. It's just a bunch of teasers. They're, like all the Godzilla sequences in the first and second act of the film are just like, okay, do some damage and then cut, cut to humans. <laughs> it is only until we get to the final act when we see full, a full sequence of battle. But even then there's still two stories going on. Godzilla versus Mudo and then humans trying to, um, you know, get to this, the, the bomb. All right. So yeah. Okay. Now they portray the military, uh, not in the best way. Like uh, some of the people, some of the, I've been reading some of the comments and a lot of the fans were saying that, um, this feels like a military recruitment commercial. I don't think so. I disagree with that. Michael Bay makes a military recruitment uh, commercial. He makes the military look good. I mean, he makes them look well organized. They got tactics. They they know what they're doing, and he just puts them in a really good light. The military in this, while they seem a lot cooler and a little bit smarter than the ones in the 1988 film, they're still um, not that smart. Okay, <laughs> uh, it's only a slight improvement because at least they give the military guys a little more personality. And uh, they, they, they just look cooler. Uh, and they don't look as dumb in the 1998 Godzilla film. But they're still quite dumb. I, I thought that the, the military didn't ha have a, load, a whole lot of great tactics when dealing with this sort of thing. Yes, I understand it's a, it's a new type of threat. And they've never dealt, like, de dealt with anything like this before. But I'm sure in some sort of top secret handbook, there is a protocol in dealing with extraterrestrials or unknown beasts or monsters okay but okay let me just uh, give you an example okay there's a scene where <clears throat> they're battling Godzilla for the first time where they're on the, the, the I think it's the Golden Gate Bridge the, on the Golden Gate Bridge has I think it has a four lanes okay um, th and then the military takes up three lanes and then one lane is left for uh, 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 one lane is left for going for, for civilians to pass by, okay? You have school buses full of children, you have families, you have civilians trying to get to safety, but the military has little dis little regard for that because they're so busy and wrapped up on setting themselves, like, you know, setting up, you know, uh, um, getting their, their, their weapons ready for to fight Godzilla. Are you kidding me, okay? You put a roadblock in front of a school bus, Okay, you tell the school bus to stop going. The school bus is full of school kids because you guys have to set up for your assault. Are you freaking kidding me? The job is to defend. <laughs> the job of the military is to protect. Okay, protecting these innocent children. Get them to safety. <laughs> when when I saw that moment, I was like, "Are you freaking serious? This is just this is just a, a like a cluster F." Okay, like <laughs> this makes no sense at all. Sure, it made for a, a, a cool action sequence, but uh, that that whole thing just made no sense to me. They should be getting the, the, the they should not be putting a roadblock in front of a school bus. <laughs> okay, so that, that was that was not smart. Another thing that's really not smart about the military is that they don't have any real tactics. All right. It's just um, uh, let's stand in front of this giant beast. In, in, his, in, in his peripheral vision where we're directly in front of him and start shooting upwards and not let's not um, evade the fact that we're going to get stomped, okay? So here's a platoon right here. It's a platoon of 10 guys shooting up and then Muto goes, boom, they're dead. Okay, here's another platoon. They're standing in, they're, they're sitting ducks, okay? They're standing at the pier, like the dock and then they're going and then stomp. <laughs> you know, it was a really cool sequence and it showed the sheer force of Muto and the brutality of Muto, but it, you know, it doesn't put the military in a very good light. <laughs> they just don't have a lot of really good tactics. Um, like they said, they, they stand all in one place and allow themselves to get stomped. It's just not very smart. Now, let's start. Now, let's, those are all the, the things that I didn't really like about the film, which are actually minor things. It doesn't affect the story. 
all right uh, it just affects the like you know how 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 I as a fan might feel all right um, just little nitpicky things now the things that I do like about the movie is that I love the design of the Mutos it's very different it's it's different from what we're used to I like the square shape of his head you know and the, the 90 I mean the the, the, the sharp angles is it's very neat I like that it almost feels somewhat robotic because in a way it is a creation of man all right I love the scenes where uh, uh, um, even though I was complaining about the tactics of uh, <laughs> of the uh, of the the, the 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 military or lack of the tactics, I love the scene where the the Muto actually stomps on them. Okay, it's not because I didn't like the military. I love that that the the Muto is so brutal, and I love the director's vision, and that is like there's got to be human casualties. All right, because every time he stomped on, I was like, oh, ouch! You know that that was good. I really felt that. I love the scenes where. Uh, um, uh, 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 where where obviously Godzilla was showing up, but what I liked the most about a, a, a Godzilla film is how they showed that Godzilla seems to have personality. You 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 kind of think that he's got something on his mind. He has a motive. He has a mission, and he's going from point A to B for a specific reason. All right, it's not just about he's hungry. All right, it's not just about he wants to wreck things or break things. He has a very specific mission, and we, as an audience, we don't exactly know what's going on in his mind, but we know there's something going on in his mind, and it makes him for a very, um, uh, you know, uh, like a smart monster. All right, he's got character, and and I like that about about uh, this this Godzilla. All right, and he's not just a stupid dumb kaiju. All right, with just a destructive force. Okay, so very very cool. You know, which leads me to to also like the design. Design is a very classic looking design. A few minor tweaks here and there, but still, it's the classic Godzilla design. Unlike that that whatever you call that thing back in the 1998 film. All right, um, his lightning breath was a great homage to the original. Uh, that was cool. Just seeing it when I saw that, I actually um, I mean, thank God it was loud. But I actually screamed in the movie. I, I didn't scream like like a girl, but I was like, oh, you know, I was like that because I didn't expect that. Like I I felt that Godzilla had some tricks up his sleeve, but it was so cool to see him with his lightning breath. And that 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 freaking fatality was was just freaking awesome at the end of the movie. All right. Now other things that I like about Godzilla is that those scenes where Godzilla's swimming next to the navy, uh, you know, the ships, those that was cool. That was actually really cool. I, I like that because the Navy is constantly keeping an eye on Godzilla. And it shows that they are, um, you know, they, they are in contact with the creature. Um, they always um, maintain proximity with it. Which is a good thing because in a 1998 film, you know, I keep on comparing it. But it they're really dumb. Uh, the, the, the military, they keep on... They fight it with Godzilla, then suddenly they lose them in a cloud of smoke. They keep on losing them. They keep on going with, all right, all right, uh, uh, we got him, we got him. Oh crap, we lost them. Sorry, sir. <laughs> and then, and then you have the cliche uh, 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 military general who always goes, damn it, <laughs> and he does that throughout the entire movie. Unlike this movie, where they seem to know what they're doing, but once they get, you, you know to the time where they have to fight them, they don't really, you know, their their plans don't always go as planned, all right? So, very, very cool. Um, uh, speaking of Godzilla, I love the roar. The roar, every time, it gives me goosebumps. It's scary because it's very, very loud. And when he just screams at you, there's a sheer force, okay? And I love the sound that follows after uh, Godzilla's roar. It, I know it's the classic sound from the Japanese films, but I like the fact that that it's a. Um, it almost feels like an echo. It's it's like this kind of attention to detail where this roar is so loud that there's an there's an additional sound that is made in his throat or in his in his lungs or or it's made from the from from the the, the the roar echoing through the through the city or something like that I don't know but it's just a really cool noise I really really like that they included that now I love the fact that it wasn't um like a repeat of the first film which is military versus Godzilla all right uh, that's something the filmmakers didn't want to do they wanted to tell a story about the king of kaijus the king of monsters Godzilla is the king of monsters and they truly established that 
by making this a monster versus monster movie. Um, the moment when Ken Watanabe said, let them fight, I got chills, okay? Because that really established, okay, this is the type of movie we're gonna get. We're gonna get a full on kaiju movie where we're gonna see kaijus fight like in Pacific Rim. And this is the type of movie that I want to see. I don't just want to see guys with pea shooters shooting up and then doing no damage. I mean, come on. They should know by now that M4s don't do anything to, to Godzilla's thick skin. I mean, look at it. It's just not smart. You got to shoot projectiles or something, okay? But when Ken Watanabe, who's, you know, the smart one, he knows what the hell's going on. He's got some great theories, obviously because he's Japanese and, you know, there's got to be some sort of Japanese, you know, Godzilla is Japanese, all right? Essentially, you know, it's, it's a Japanese, a creation of Japanese, all right? I, I love the fact that that um, the best way to take down this beast is to let these guys take each other out, all right? So, very, very cool. Uh, Godzilla makes an appearance to establish that he is the king of kaijus. He's there to establish dominance. Nothing more than that. And then that's why we get all this destruction. Very, very cool. I'm very happy with this film. Some things could be improved. Obviously, I wish there was more Godzilla screen time. Just like I would wish for more Transformers screen time. But you know what? It was a decent enough story with a decent enough human emotion. I mean, like human element. Um... And, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and a good, a very fine balance of monster versus human uh, 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 plot, all right? And, and I think while I wished for a little bit more monster plot, I still think that Gareth Edwards did a great job because as a story, it flowed quite well, all right? And, like as a progressive story rather because like all the, 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 all the action was really at the end of the movie, all right? So there you have it. That's all I got to say in this video. Tell me what you did and didn't like about this movie. Let me know in the comment section below. And there you have it. That's all I got to say in this video. <laughs> Excuse me. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Rage Nation, also follow me on Twitter, at Rage Nation. My name is Alex Yu, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time, peace. But it's kind of like a globe-trotting movie, because you go from one place, to another place, to another place, like, you know, I, I just came back from Hawaii, okay, so when 